Kerry gave the advice at an audience with the outgoing ambassador of South Sudan to Nigeria, Makwet Riak. State House correspondent Adam Musambu reports. President Muhammadu Buhari said for decades Nigeria's economy heavily depended on oil and following the drop in global oil prices, it has been adversely affected. He told the outgoing envoy that South Sudan can avoid the mistake by growing its economy through agriculture. The president said Nigeria is now committed to investing in sustainable agriculture as the best way to achieving food security, keeping the nation productive and providing jobs for the people. He used the forum to praise the excellent relations between Nigeria and South Sudan and reaffirmed his commitment to strengthening existing bilateral ties. The outgoing ambassador of South Sudan to Nigeria, Mr. Makwe, described his four-year duty tour in Nigeria as very fruitful. He said South Sudan is blessed with fertile land and would welcome more investment from Nigerian companies. From the State House, Adamu Sambu, NTA News. President Muhammad Buhari has renewed the commitment of his administration towards making agriculture a truly paying business that can trigger national economic growth and lift millions out of poverty in line with the change agenda. The president stated these at the 8th Bola Tinumbu Colloquium as part of activities marking the 64th birthday of the All Progressives Congress national leader. State House correspondent Adam Osambo reports that the colloquium has as its theme agriculture, action, work, revolution. Approach is required that can challenge most states and local governments, companies, as well as development partners to step up and play a role in making the change revolution in agriculture a reality. I want to pledge to you today that our commitment to agriculture will remain a priority for this government. We can unleash the change that makes agriculture work for our people and our nation. President Muhammad Buhari used the opportunity to pay glowing tribute to Bola Ahmed Tinubu at 64, saying there are very few patriots dead or alive that can match the commitment, resilience, and creativity of the APC chieftain in organizing Nigeria's public life for good. Speakers at the colloquium, including the Minister of State for Agriculture, Henneken Lokpaburi, agreed that time has come that Nigeria dismantle all obstacles to agricultural revolution for sustainable economic prosperity. Agriculture not only gives the riches to a nation, but the only riches she can call her own. If we fix our agriculture, not only do we stand to benefit, but we can also provide for all of West Africa. Today, the winds of change are sweeping through Nigeria. I fervently believe that agriculture can tell a better story than oil. The Bola Ahmed Tinubu annual colloquium, who started in 2009, had last year focused on actions to revive the damaged economy and provide soccer to Nigeria's citizens. In Abuja, Adam Musambu, NTA News. The Bola Ahmed Tinubu Colloquium identified increased financing of the value chain in agriculture as one of the major ways of revamping the sector. Mohamed Hamza Sheikh, who monitored the presentations, now reports. The Bola Tinubu Colloquium aims to influence lasting change in Nigeria's social, political, and economic spheres. For the past eight years, the colloquium has focused on major national issues such as rule of law, health, education, and free and fair elections. This year, the colloquium is focusing on what it describes as the biggest potential to change the lives of majority of Nigerians, agriculture. In spite of being the most populous nation in Africa, predominantly a youthful workforce, more than 84 million hectares of arable land, and a wide range of climate suitable for every crop production, Nigeria has continued to spend more than $11 billion annually on importing wheat, rice, sugar, and fish. <laughs> Presentations at the colloquium suggested that paltry investments and ineffective market structure in agriculture confirmed that both private and public sectors must redirect their focus on agriculture value chain. Let us encourage our youth. Maybe your shoe or the slippers that you are wearing in the house, they can be manufacturing it for you. We have the best product of all your jewelries in Nigeria. Encourage 
to wear things that are made in this country. Without an effective and efficient extension system, all the things we're talking about will not happen. I've been thinking, when is change gonna come? For the celebrant, Ashwaju Ahmed Bola Tinubu, it was optimism all through on the brighter future of Nigeria. Those who are thinking that our common sense revolution is not a real is urging the civil servants not to relent in their commitments to duty as the federal government is working out modalities to make life better for her citizens. I want to assure all the civil servants that these efforts they are displaying to be patriotic and committed to their duties despite the challenges on ground will not go unrecognized or unrewarded. Unlike in the past, when there was a low turnout of civil servants after such holidays, observers say the new zeal and commitment being exhibited by the civil servants, it is obvious that the nation is closer to achieving greatness. At Debola, Brooklyn Sunday, NTA News. Senate President Abubakar Bukola Saraki has pledged a new dawn for the private sector and foreign investors as the National Assembly works on laws that will make doing business in Nigeria worthwhile. Senator Saraki stated these when he hosted Colombian parliamentarians and businessmen on a three-city tour of Nigeria. National Assembly correspondent Muhammad Ali reports. Abuja is not among the three cities the Colombian parliamentarians and businessmen are selected to visit in their search for partnerships and business opportunities in Nigeria. The team, however, deems it fit to interact with their Nigerian counterparts, hence the visit to the Senate president. Bukola Saraki was quick to inform the team that they are coming at a time when Nigeria's parliament, in collaboration with the private sector, is reviewing, repealing and amending laws that will ease doing business in the country. You will have a great understanding of the country, great opportunities here, and we are very, very keen to start that relationship. Sadaki, who said Nigeria has similar bicameral legislature as Colombia, noted that such visits will enable the legislators of both countries exchange ideas and strengthen relationships between them. Leader of the Colombian parliamentarians and businessmen, Senator Edinson Delgado, said they are in Nigeria to foster diplomatic ties and explore business opportunities in three cities of Lagos, Yola and Port Harcourt. From the National Assembly, Mohamed Ali, NTA News. Minister of Information and Culture, Lai Mohamed, has appealed to all Nigerians to continue to believe in the change mantra of the All Progressives Congress APC government. The minister made the appeal on today's Good Morning Nigeria. Over 7,000 megawatts, which is what we're aiming at. The minister reiterated federal government's resolve through its social intervention program and skill acquisition to employ and empower the youths. We have this massive social intervention program, which is, in about five, which is in about five different areas. The first is that we are going to employ 500,000 unemployed graduates who we are going to train as teachers, and we pay them. We are making provision for market women to come and take loans to be trained and start other business. We are also, in, in this social intervention, we also have the homegrown one million day program and we are targeting 12 million students all over Nigeria. He stressed the need for everyone to play their part as patriotic citizens to make the country a safer and peaceful place. In Abuja, Abdul Malik Adjo, NTA News. For the power sector to meet the needs of Nigeria's populace, the federal government says it will adopt a multifaceted approach to develop solar, hydro and coal. Minister of Power, Works and Housing, Babatunde Fashola, stated this while reacting to some issues affecting the power sector. Olajide Bello her reports. According to the Minister of Power, Works and Housing, Babatunde Fashola will be determined based on availability of the main source of generating power. And what we are doing now is to find the most prolific solar area of the run, and I think it's looking like Jigawa and Kano, where the irradiation is at the highest and classify that area as our solar belt. For down south, 
in the south, south, and southwest, it will largely be gas. In parts of the southeast, it will be a combination of gas and coal. The minister also reacted to the hike in electricity tariff and the availability of meters for consumers. Deciding tariff again, what people must understand is that their consumers are classed in different categories. R1, for example, is the most vulnerable consumer. Their tariff is four naira per kilowatt hour or something like that. It remains fixed. It wasn't changed. Then there's R2, one face. Those are people who have the basic TV, one fridge. And then there's R2, three face security of pipelines, supply and distribution, and place support to the minister. Well, we are going to sharpen the teeth of our oversight uh, process in making sure that uh, you move ahead with your uh, arrangement, with the arrangement you set for yourself to achieve uh, the set goal. From the National Assembly, Kenneth Nanim, NTN News. President Muhammad Buhari will leave Abuja for, Wash for Washington, D.C. on Wednesday, March 30, 2016, to join President Barack Ob Obama and about 60 other world leaders and heads of international representing Hong Gombe Federal Constituency at the National Assembly. Lady Balas report is here presented. Hong local government, the home of the Secretary to the Government of the Federation, is one of the local government areas in Adamawa State that were devastated by the activities of insurgents where lives and property were lost in large numbers. Speaking at the distribution of relief materials provided by the federal government, the SGF, Obabachir David Lawan, represented by a political associate, Cletus Song, said the federal government has already set up a resettlement committee and the names of IDPs who have returned will be recorded to see how they can be assisted. He warned that the relief materials are strictly for their consumption and not for sale and anybody found selling will be sanctioned during future distribution exercise. The Director General National Emergency Management Agency, Mohamed Sani Sidi, represented by the Adamawa State NEMA Coordinator, Saad Bello, said the agency is working around the clock to ensure all IDPs returned to their localities safely. He said NEMA is more than ever before ready to provide basic amenities of life and conducive living atmosphere for returnees in every area declared safe by security agencies. The essence is to provide immediate relief to those that are returning to their communities, uh, especially food and some immediate non-food requirements. Items donated include assorted food items, building materials, and mattresses. In Yola, Mohamed Saidu, NTN News. Oni of Ife Adeye Enito Ogunusi says Nigeria's historical assets are enough to empower the youths if exploited for tourism purposes to attract world's attention as a historical heritage. He started days in Abuja during a visit to the chairman of the African Business Roundtable, Alhaji Bamangatukur. Timothy Yusuf reports. The Oni pointed out that the ancient town of Ife is replete with many mystical signs, artifacts and ancient relics, capable of attracting tourists all over the world. Efforts towards showcasing these potentials informed the visit of the monarch to Bamangatuko as part of his building bridges of peace across the country. We want to get closer to our past leaders. How did you do it then? <laughs> maybe you will advise us better, maybe to be fortright. Maybe to be more hard working. So, on behalf of the entire youth, this is one of our products. Unless you are a we will continue to make it. Right. Alhaji Bamangatuku described the royal father as a truly bridge builder between the young and the old, promising genuine support to his cause. We believe in what we are doing. We'll pray for you. Prolong your life and your reign to ensure that history will judge you so correctly. A special prayer by the ONI for the peace and progress of Nigeria climaxed the visit in Abuja, Timothy Yusuf, NT News. The Nigerian army have confirmed the death of Colonel Samaila Inusa, who was kidnapped last Sunday in Kaduna.
A statement by the Director of Army Public Relations, Colonel Sani Usman, announced that Colonel Samaila Inusa was found dead at about 6 p.m. this evening. It stated further that the plenum. This message is brought to you by the Federal Ministry of Information and Culture. family today and then get five times the value of every recharge recharge with star 555 star pin hash on the airtel network and feel at home airtel the smartphone network you get three kinds of moms the paranoid mom it's hot and it's dirty the cautious mom and the Detto Mom. Only a Detto Mom knows that ordinary soaps aren't enough. She only trusts Detto to protect her family from up to 100 illness causing germs, which is why you can worry less and love more. Don't just be any mom, be a Detto Mom. Detto, be 100% sure. Share a make a friend. Stick together till the end. Share a mentor, socialize Share mentors and be nice Share Mentors candy, crunchy outside, chewy inside Stick together till the end oh, oh, oh. Enjoy mentors, have some fun Who says no to mentors? As a 21st century mom, I try to find balance in everything I do Thanks to my fantastic new meal partner, Tastic Everything is so much easier. Just look at this new quality pasta. Rich golden color, cooks perfectly and doesn't stick. Now that's my fantastic tastic. It's got to be tastic. Well, everything doesn't always go as planned. But meal times are always perfect with Tastic. Now you know why she's the star of the family and her workplace too. It's got to be Tastic. Serve fantastic new Tastic, your perfect meal partner. Hello! Would you like some water? It's cold, especially for you. Which air are you living in? We have a fridge. When everything else in your house is from the present, then why are your toilet cleaning methods from the past? Hapik, all in one for you. Compared to other toilet cleaners, Hapik removes top stains, kills all germs, and removes bad odors. For a shining clean and fresh toilet. Wow! You should also take the Hapik all in one challenge. Good moms know how to prepare their kids for greatness by giving them Milo with breakfast every morning. And now, Milo has Active Go, a special blend of Pokemon, vitamins and minerals uniquely mixed with milk and cocoa to bring you the winning energy of Milo. Milo, the energy food drink of future champions. Nestle, good food, good life. You get three kinds of mom. Connect to a tissue that. Connect to the winning team. A tissue that and FC Barcelona. Connecting Champions. Thank you for remaining with the NTA Network News. Effective implementation of the 2016 budget is key to stimulating the economy, especially with provision of 1.5 trillion naira for the infrastructure and development of the country. This was the position of guests on Good Morning Nigeria who discussed implementing the 2016 budget. Abdul Malik Adu has details. On the issue of the 2016 budget, the guests on the program say its passage has dispared fears and concern raised by domestic and international investors on the direction of the economy. They applauded the adjustment made by the National Assembly in the passage of the appropriation bill and the planned oversight to ensure effective implementation of the budget. 
And the right thing was that we should look at the budget as it affects the people and pass it in line with the welfare of our people because things are difficult, really. I'm happy that, again, for the first time, and um, possibly in the spirit of the times, the budget parameters were respected. Um, and happily, a lot of the assumptions in the budget are becoming realistic. The guest, however, stressed the need to reappraise the monetary policies to spur growth in the country. Uh, what I think we need to reconsider is that we need to rebase the inflation targeting and we need to take a look at our threshold for inflation uh, and I think that a, a threshold of inflation of about 13 to 14 percent should still be acceptable because what we need is growth and we need the monetary policy that will complement uh, this well put together budget. It's a, a, a huge deficit budget but when you are in a recession you certainly need to do that in order to stimulate aggregate demand and then promote growth. In Abuja, Abdul Malik Adio, NTA News. The Adamawa State Government says arrangements have been concluded to receive almost 60,000 internally displaced persons from the Cameroon. Governor Bindo Jibrila of Adamawa State announced this when the Chief of Air Staff, Air Marshal Sadiq Abubakar, paid him a courtesy visit in Government House Eola. Defense correspondent KG Busari Ahmad reports. The Damawa state government, still battling with over 5,000 internally displaced persons scattered in six camps across the state, two being district camps in Malkohi and Fufore, is expecting 56,000 more internally displaced persons from Cameroon. President Muhammad Buhari has directed the bilateral air service agreement BASA between Nigeria and Israel should be activated immediately to enable Nigerian Christian pilgrims to the Holy Land of Israel have a seamless exercise. Executive Secretary of the Nigerian Christian Pilgrims Commission, John Kennedy Obara, announced this at the departure of another batch of Christian pilgrims to Israel from Niger, Kaduna and Adamawa states for the Easter pilgrimage. Makut Simon Mocham reports. About 300 Christians, most of them from Niger State, are on this batch of intending pilgrims heading for the Holy Land of Israel. Going forward, however, intending pilgrims to the Holy Land will be spared the rigor of stopover in another country before arriving Israel. This, the Executive Secretary of the Nigerian Christian Pilgrims Commission, John Kennedy Okpara, says, is because President Muhammadu Buhari has directed the immediate activation of the bilateral air service agreement signed in 2013 between Nigeria and Israel. That the pilgrims can now fly direct from Nigeria to the state of Israel. Mr. President has directed that it should be activated immediately because he wants to lessen the pressure and the problem that the pilgrims encounter while traveling to different countries. Governor Abubakar Sani Bell of Niger State reminded the intending pilgrims that they need to pray for the nation and be good ambassadors. He is also excited that about 100 of them will be trained in agriculture during the period. For me, this is a win-win. Apart from the value in terms of prayer, uh, they also come back with something that would uh, sustain them eventually. Thank you. Officials with the Nigerian Christian Pilgrims Commission assured the intending pilgrims that all arrangements have been made for a heat-free exercise. From the Namde Azikiwe International Airport, Abuja, Makut Simon Macham, NTA News. For more on NTA Network News, let's join Jennifer in our Lagos Network Center. Hello, Jennifer. Hello, Kudu. Good evening and a very warm welcome to Lagos. Selfless service remains the best way to live enduring legacy in the sands of time. This truism was re-echoed at the 10th Memorial Lecture of the late former Vice-Chancellor, University of Lagos, Professor Jelili Omotola. Vice President Yemi Oshibajo, who was represented, advocates selfless service as the mission for leaders in the country. Deji Dewi reports that Justice Chima Wize of the Nigerian Supreme Court was the guest lecturer at the event. Professor Jalilio Motola was a renowned scholar who left indelible legacies first as a dean, faculty of law, and later as the vice chancellor of the University of Lagos. Vice President Yemi Oshimbaju, who was represented, says selfless service, which the late professor of law rendered in his lifetime, should be emulated by leaders at different levels of government. He had achieved a feat in the administration of a university, and that feat was that a university 
would be commercially productive while maintaining its intellectual excellence. The guest lecturer, after going through the contributions of the late Homotola to the development of land and property law in Nigeria, challenged scholars and practicing lawyers to build on these legacies. One sure way of achieving this is by the collation and publication of the controversies in the land design into one single volume, preferably dedicated to his memory. It's always important to look beyond the present. I always think about the future not only in terms of scholarship, but in terms of building up talents. Two publications, Critical Issues in Nigeria Property Law and a Visionary University Administrator, both written in honor of the late university dawn, were presented at the event. The lesson to all of us is to be men of quality, do quality work, to try as much as possible to dedicate a structure to this distinguished scholar and citizen administrator. The late Professor Jadili Omotola was the living authority in land and property law in Nigeria until his death in the year 2006. In Lagos, Dichido, NT News. More prominent Nigerians have continued to personally pay their condolences to the family of the late Dr. Tunji Braithwaite, who passed on yesterday. Tunde Saike reports that sympathizers have continued to share memories they made with the late elder statesman in Lagos. Among the visitors were the Lagos State vocal and never compromised his position. Born in 1933, Dr. Bretwick was a second Republic politician and a prominent member of the last national conference in Lagos. Tunde Saike, NTA News. This is the Lagos Network Center of the NTA. More reports are ahead on the news from Abuja when we return after this timeout. Stay tuned. Most people avoid the tough jobs. We're different. We're not here to complain that things are broken. We're here to fix them. You need someone that will take the tough decisions and stand by their word. To do that, you need the best of the best. Physically, mentally. So it doesn't matter if it's creating opportunities or supporting economies. We know it's a tough job. But hey, somebody's got to do it. We are Fidelity. We keep our word. The Nigerian Society of Engineers, NSE, in June 2014 declared the College of Engineering of Afe Babalola University at Dwekiti, Abwad, as the template for engineering education in Nigeria. The NSE held that 40% of the sophisticated engineering equipment are peculiar to Abwad. It further advised higher institutions and industries to take maximum advantage of the modern engineering equipment. Abwad hereby invite higher institutions, researchers, and industries to avail themselves of the use of the state-of-the-art equipment. For more details, contact Professor A. Adiroba, Abwad Directorate of Technological Development, email technodev at abwad.edu.ng. Phone numbers 070-658-76489 or 080-347-07917. Abward, a vision in motion. Does your antiseptic liquid kill the germs that cause <laughs> flu, diarrhea, typhoid, death all dogs? Dettol provides 10 times more protection versus leading competition. Dettol is the number one selling antiseptic liquid proven to protect from up to 100 illness causing gems. So why take a risk with your loved ones? As a 21st century mom, I try to find balance in everything I do. Thanks to my fantastic new meal partner, Tastic. Everything is so much easier. Just look at this new quality pasta. Rich golden color, cooks perfectly and doesn't stick. Now that's my fantastic tastic. It's got to be tastic. Well, everything doesn't always go as planned. But meal times are always perfect with tastic. Now you know why she's the star of the family and her workplace too. It's got to be tastic. 
serve fantastic new Tastic, your perfect meal partner. It begins with a passion to connect, connect. to the one of a kind connection that can, no, won't be defined. Has impact upon noting that the reality on the ground needs blockage of leakages and prudent management of resources. TSA has come to stay. The benefits of TSA are obvious and uh, we'll continue to do it to elevate it to a better uh, height that will tap the benefit that is expected to be derived from TSA uh, implementation. Uh, Nigerians really have to appreciate the different reform initiatives. The Treasury single account is primarily to ensure accountability, enhance transparency, and avoid misapplication of public funds. And Nigeria is now the largest producer of cassava with an annual output of 45 million metric tons. The Minister of Agriculture and Rural Development, Audubi, made a remark at the sideline of the official launch of the State Partnership for Agriculture in collaboration with the Bill and Melinda Foundation. About 35 improved varieties of cassava have so far been developed and registered in Nigeria. And trading on the Nigerian Stock Exchange resumed this Tuesday after the long Easter holiday. The equities market, however, closed on a negative note. Here's a graphical illustration. That concludes business news. I am Chia Zalameki. The news continues. Please stay with us. The Nigerian Navy is leading West African navies in concert with U.S. Euro-Atlantic nations to develop a regional standard operating procedure to secure joint and exclusive economic zones. This is the fallout of the just-concluded exercise of Bangame Saharan Express 2016 held in Senegal and the Cameroons. Defense correspondent Mohamed Abdul Ghadir reports. Increasing threats to maritime safety and security at national and regional levels make cooperation among navies in the Gulf of Guinea inevitable. What you saw is a demonstration of professional competence of the Nigerian Navy. Having uniform standards of security on the seas is the very essence of this exercise. The role of the Nigerian Navy in this regard is germane to fashion out regional standard operating procedures to decisively deal with illicit bunkering, piracy and sea robbery. Obangame has met the objectives and um, we just hope to keep improving in the way we do our things. We were able to achieve what we set out to do, which was to create enough synergy for all maritime stakeholders, on a post-mortem assessment of the benefits of the just-concluded exercise, participants said it has improved operational capability, capacity, maritime domain awareness, and law enforcement. The exercise focused on synergy and strategy, as well as information sharing and messaging capabilities of the participating navies. From Douala Cameroonian Waters on board NNS Opabana, Mohammad Abdel Kahade, NTA News. Subquarter is up next, and Fatih Musa Abdullahi is there to fill us in with stories from the Caliphate. Your honor, Fatih. Of the Caliphate. President Mohammad Buhari has sent a delegation to sympathize with the affected traders in the market. He commended security agencies for their commitment. And Bernie Kebi. Suman Abdullah Shehu, NTA News. For a state chapter of the Police Officers' Wives Association has solicited support for vulnerable children and orphans to enable them become useful members of the society. Chairperson of the Association and wife of the State Commissioner of Police, Mrs. Istifanus Shetima, gave the advice children a visit to Gusau Orphanage. Jamil Ibrahim has more. Officials of the Zamfara State Chapter of the Police Officers' Wives Association, led by their chairperson and wife of the State Commissioner of Police, Mrs. Hawashatima, were in Guso Orphanage as part of activities to mark the 2016 Police Week in the state. The humanitarian visit was aimed at interacting with the orphans there 
in putting smiles on their faces as the visitors carried along with them foodstuffs and some other essential items as donation to the children. Mrs. Shatima, who presented the items to the officer in charge of the orphanage, said the donation was in line with the directive given by the Inspector General of Police, Mr. Solomon Arasi, that humanitarian services should form the component of this year's Police Week's celebration. Officer in charge of the Kusau orphanage, Haja Binta Yusuf, thanked the Police Officers' Wives Association for the donation and pledged to make judicious utilization of the items. From Kusau, Jamil Ibrahim. NTA News. From Sokoto, it's back to Muhammad. Thank you, Fati. Overhead, global tidbits and some sports news. Don't go away. Strengthen interfaith unity, peace and tolerance amongst Nigerians is the focus on NTA Tuesday Live this week. It is informative, educative and enlightening. Tuesday Live, can be told. Join us. The production, distribution and sale of counterfeit and fake drugs is a corrupt practice and a crime against humanity. This has informed several measures and strategies to combat fake drugs, including introduction of anti-counterfeit and cutting-edge technologies to detect fake drugs on the spot. These technologies are being deployed to all the states across the Federation, as well as the internally displaced people's camps. The President, Muhammad Buhari and his team are committed to this fight. The federal government of Nigeria, in line with its anti-corruption agenda and posture, will fight a total war against fake drugs and other unwholesome regulated products in order to ensure that Nigerians remain healthy and well. Lend your support and join NAFDAQ to reach the country of fake drugs and unwholesome regulated products. NAFDAQ, safeguarding the health of the nation. With total submission to the will of the Almighty God, the Michael Obele Abone family of Ezebazu village, Ichida, in Anaucha local government area of Anambra state, announced a triumphant return to the Almighty God of their husband, father, brother, grandfather, and father-in-law, Professor Michael Obele Abone, which sad event occurred on the 15th of December, 2015. Burial arrangements, 30th March, the body leaves Our Lady of Fatima Catholic Hospital for his Oka residence by 10 a.m., 5 p.m. Vigil Mass in his country home, 31st March, by 10 a.m. Funeral Mass at St. Teresa's Catholic Church, Ichida. Internment follows immediately. He is survived by Professor Clementina Aboni, wife, Barrister Vivian Arinze, Pharmacist Harrison Aboni, Barrister Scholastica Andy Uhuara, Dr. Somke Nechuku Aboni, Dr. Chukwemeka Aboni, Genevieve Oluchuku Aboni. May his most gentle soul rest in the bosom of the Lord. Professor Clementina Aboni, for the family. Announcer. On the international scene, Cyprus airport hostage drama ends. Hijacker turns self in. And the Zambian government and the opposition hold peace talks ahead of the country's general elections in August. For leaders of these and more, here's Chimidema Ndubisi. The man that hijacked an Egypt airplane with 60 people on board, diverting it to Cyprus, has surrendered to security forces. All hostages were released. Cyprus president said the situation was not terror-related, although the hijacker, whose motive is unclear, claimed to be wearing a suicide explosive belt, which was later found to be fake. In Brussels, chief executive officer of the airport attacked last week by terrorists says the airport will reopen at 20% capacity on Wednesday, but full capacity operation will take up two months. Back in Africa, Congo's opposition supporters heeded the call for industrial action by the leaders in protest against the incumbent president's third term re-election. And European Union is proposing to cut funds given to Burundi for its peacekeeping mission in Somalia. This is intended to twist the president's hand into holding peace talks with the opposition to resolve the crisis situation in the country before it becomes full-blown. That's Global Tidbits, Chimdema Ndubisi, NTA News. And in sports, Nigeria's Super Eagles have crashed out of the 2017 Afcon finals in Gabon. This follows their loss to the pharaohs of Egypt this evening in Alexandria. Kenema Wodike has details. 
Since winning the 2013 Africa Cup of Nations in South Africa, getting tickets to participate in subsequent editions of the tournament has been a problem for the Super Eagles. As Nigeria failed to participate in the 2015 edition in Equatorial Guinea, so also will the team be absent in the 2017 edition. In Alexandria, Egypt, Tuesday evening, the Super Eagles considered a long goal in the return leg to deny themselves the ticket to Gabon 2017. Now. Could be a chance, it's a chance, it's a trickle through then from Ramadan Sobi. With this victory, Egypt are comfortably leading Group G with 7 points, while Nigerian are in the second position with 2 points. Analysts believe that the Super Eagles 1-1 draw against Pharaohs of Egypt last Friday in Kaduna was their Waterloo in this crucial stage of qualification. The three-time champions will now begin to rebuild for the 2019 edition. With Sports Update, Kene Imabodike, NTA News. Now the weather prospects for Wednesday. Hello, glad to have you join us on the weather segment. The visibility over the extreme part of the country is expected to improve into hazy and sunny conditions as southwesterly are likely within part of that region. And onto the forecast, we anticipate sunny and hazy conditions to affect that region in the morning, with cloudy to partly cloudy conditions affecting the central cities, except Jalingo Ibi axis, that have prospects of isolated thunderstorms within the mid-morning hours. The coastal cities, Eket, Calabar, Benin, Lagos, will witness some isolated thunderstorms within the mid-morning hours as well. Later on, we anticipate a better bit up of weather activity Activities, especially over the southern cities, to give rise to localized thunderstorms in some cities, with isolated thunderstorms affecting high grounds of the central cities.